Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Hey, grab yourself a cup of tea. This is gonna be a great program. And uh, first of all, I just wanna say I'm so thankful for you. Uh, we hear from new viewers all the time and it's so wonderful, it's so heartwarming. And um, thank you for your kind remarks. Sometimes you send us email or sometimes snail mail, which I still use a great deal. And uh, you're, you're grateful for the, the variety of messages and subject matter and guests that we have. And um, it's certainly our pleasure to bring it to you. And we um, have such, such a guest today, and that's Stephen Strang. And he's going to be talking about his newest book, which is about the next uh, presidential election coming up. But uh, before I join him, I, I wanna say, uh, thank you, but also I want to say that we need your support. Uh, we are viewer supported, and it's uh, it's important that as the Lord speaks to you, and I know he does, I know he does, uh, to support this program, one that really features the home. Very important. So if you would like to do that, the information is coming up on your screen. You can call 1-800-229-0059 if you use a credit card, or you can write to us at Homekeepers. We love getting your mail, your kind remarks, and that address is Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And thank you for anything you can do. I'm delighted to have a return guest, and uh, we could talk about all the accolades, but we're gonna talk about one book today. Welcome back, Stephen Strang. So glad to have you. Well, thank you. I enjoy being on your show. And this looks very patriotic, very political. God, Trump, and the 2020 election. And I um, think there's many, many reasons that you did write it, but what was the main reason? It's how serious things yes, are. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, <laughs> We dodged a bullet in mm -hmm. 2016. I mean, think of what would be going on if Hillary Clinton was in the White mm -hmm. House. The two judges on the Supreme Court would have been very different, of course. Um, our support of Israel would not be what it is. Uh, we would the, not the, have the economy we had. Oh, the economy was so sluggish. In fact, uh, Barack Obama made fun of Trump, remember, during the mm -hmm. election? He said, what does he have? Because he, I guess he was responding to some things that Trump said he would say. He said, why does he have a magic wand? Mm -hmm. You know, he's making fun of him. And the thing is that Trump has kept his promises. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, he said, those businesses are not coming back from overseas, and they are. They really yeah. are. They are. Co they're and still it's, coming. And it, it's, a, it's amazing how mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. uh, things have improved. And it's because he's a businessman, mm -hmm. and because he puts America first. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard someone say recently, you know, on the airplane, um, the mask comes down, and what do they say? Put it on your own face before you help someone else. Mm -hmm. And that things had gotten so bad that we need to put the oxygen on America's face so we can help police mm -hmm. the rest of the world, so mm -hmm. to speak, and help a lot of other countries because America is a, a giving country. And that comes, frankly, from our Christian roots. Absolutely. And uh, this, as we're making this program, this book has been launched a couple days ago, right? That's right. Yes. And uh, how, how would you describe your book? It's a spiritual book. Mm -hmm. I write about the spiritual dimension because there's been a lot of words written about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And almost no one deals with the spiritual dimension. There have been a few. And I want, uh, in fact, I was on Fox and Friends last week. Notice how I kind of worked that in. <laughs> and they, I saw you. Did you? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. But, I know him. <laughs> but I, I said that the, the hatred for Trump, I think, can only be explained in spiritual mm -hmm. terms, and the Christians call it spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we could talk a lot about that, but there's a whole section in the book on the spiritual dimension because, it, really, ultimately, everything is spiritual. We haven't necessarily focused on it uh, before, but I think that Christians need to understand so they know how to pray, mm -hmm. so they can even understand some of the attacks that come against this president. I think that he's got a hedge of protection around him, or how could he put up mm -hmm. with the barrage of uh, attacks that he gets every mm -hmm. single day, and it started the day that he was inaugurated. Yes, and uh, there was a group that started even before that, said if he is, we will impeach him. I mean, this is this goes way, way back. But um, I 
fully agree with you, and I'm not ashamed of my age. I'm 85 years old. I have nine great-grandchildren. I've known presidents since Roosevelt, and I'm a political junkie. All of that can give you this information. We've never lived in a time like we are now. There was a time where you might measure political um, opposites. Today, it's not political. It's righteousness. It's unrighteousness. You got one group that will kill a baby while it's still alive in birth. And you've got those that are uh, have abortion to harvest the organs. You have a, a group that is all in favor of same-sex marriage and drag queens reading to our kids. And then you've got a group that is kind of encouraging prayer and encouraging righteousness and encouraging righteous judges and all. There's your choice. It's not really Democrat and Republican. And things have changed so much since we were children. Yes. Because I'm not that far behind you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when Dwight Eisenhower, he was a, a popular and famous general, mm -hmm. uh, both the Democrats and the Republicans were trying to get him to uh -huh. run on their ticket. I mean, in a way, the parties were similar. And, you know, back then it was stuff like uh, le uh, labor relations and, mm -hmm. and strikes. Remember the railroad strikes when Truman was president, mm -hmm. things like that. But both parties were very patriotic. And they both had virtues. They both did. Mm -hmm. and um, But over time, and it really started in the 60s, mm -hmm. the radicals right. kind of took over the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. And, and back in that era, I was at the University of Florida, and I, I was a Democrat. In mm -hmm. fact, here in Florida, most people were Democrats back in that era. But mm -hmm. I had to change. And I can say what Ronald Reagan said, you know, that he didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic mm -hmm. Party left him. And I changed over the, the pro-life issue. And it's hard for me to understand how Christians can uh, uh, support the Democratic uh, position. Right. And I make this clear in the book. I don't, I don't demonize them. I realize people have different points of view. But uh, I interviewed the editor of Christianity Today, uh, which has never been for Trump. I wanted him to explain to me so I understood. And basically, they wanted someone that children could look up to, and they wanted someone who who did nuance, oh. ones who nudge along the status nuance, quo. Yeah. This is this is kind of an elitist attitude, mm -hmm. you know. That and we need a disruptor, mm -hmm. and our children could look up to Trump because he's such a strong leader and and such a good father. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's almost like they wanted. Mr. Rogers to run for president or something. <laughs> it's probably and, not going to happen. <laughs> but I think most Christians uh, woke up in this last election. 81% voted Republican. And it's not because the Republican Party is perfect, because the Republicans always have gone after evangelical votes, promise a lot of stuff, including moving the embassy to Jerusalem, and then they do nothing. Or they appoint judges that supposedly are conservative, they like. Don't do it. And, and then they get on the Supreme Court and, mm -hmm. and they show their true colors. Mm -hmm. What, uh, now you said 81% of evangelicals and that's evangelicals that voted. What is... And, and what also is, it's, it's mostly white and Hispanic. What's the, our reputation though as evangelicals for showing up at the voting booth? You know, it's not that good. And uh, I've heard the statistics of how many Christians aren't even registered. Now, that's hard for me to understand. I registered the first day I was old enough mm -hmm. to register to vote. I went down to the courthouse. I was, I was at the University of Florida at the time. I don't understand that. And then of a lot of the people that are registered don't bother to go to the polls. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to show up. I, I think that the Bible would teach us to be mm -hmm. good citizens. It says to pray for those in authority so we can have uh, live involved. good and peaceful lives and to be involved. And, um, you know, maybe this is a good place to put it in here, but you, um, you know, I quoted you twice in this book. You did. And, <laughs> um, you know, and here, here's, a, here's a sound bite on page 190. Arthelene Rippey, a Christian broadcaster, has been saying for years on the air that she's sick and tired of Christians who don't vote. Oh, Quote, wow. I to, am. To that's me, true. that's an absolute disgrace, she said. That ability to vote is holy to me, yeah. unquote. Yeah. And that was a soundbite that I needed in this chapter about uh, what's at stake if Christians don't vote. And it actually came from this program. Right here, probably. Because you let me, yeah, probably sitting on this <laughs> set, you let me run your interview on one of my 
uh, podcast on the Charisma Podcast Network. It's called The Strang Report. Mm -hmm. And then I did an article, and I quoted that in the article. And so I used it. I got your permission, of course. Yeah, but it's, I, it's sacred. It really that is. Vote is. That vote is sacred. You and come you from figured, some of these other countries, and, and, you know, people who come as immigrants, they prize it. You know, there there are a few, not very many, but there are a few Christian broadcasters who won't even interview me on the book because it's political, mm -hmm. just political. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have the right to do That's that. That's right. But it's, in my book, it's not political, and I already laid that out. When you've got You've got a president who's absolutely not perfect. Sometimes he's like a bull in a china closet, <laughs> but he's not perfect, but he encourages prayer. He encourages uh, conservative, and usually they're the more righteous judges. We, we need really judges that have kind of a biblical understanding because we got laws out of the Bible. That's exactly right. But, you know, it even goes beyond that because I don't think our framers ever thought that the judiciary would become legislators in a sense. They were never oh, intended right. to. Right. But the left, mm -hmm. going all the way back to Woodrow Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, the progressives, they call them, couldn't, they couldn't win a lot of things at the ballot box. I mean, mm -hmm. even liberal California, mm -hmm. um, there was an amendment, and, the, uh, and they made the Constitution of the state of California to say that marriage was defined between one man and one woman. And so what did the left do? They do it through the judiciary, yes. the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. One man, um, Anthony mm -hmm. Kennedy, one man mm -hmm. who has never vo elected anything made the deciding vote. Yeah. If he had voted the other way, um, of course, it would not be the law of the land. And so they- I've often thought of him on that one vote. Oh, he'll go down in history yeah. or infamy for that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he'll have to stand before God mm -hmm. at some point. Absolutely. But what's happened because the left, we'll call them the left, mm -hmm. and they've taken over the Democrat. And look how, uh, and now the socialists are trying to take over the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. It is not the party of Harry and Truman. And they're not pretending. They no. call it socialism. They I call know. It. Who would have thought? Yeah. Who would have thought? And then you've got your younger people who are uh, drawn to that. Uh, there's so many examples. Let's take a look at Venezuela and some of those just in, in recent recent history. Hey, if you just joined me, I'm talking to Stephen Strang. Glad to have him back on Homekeepers and this brand new book just, just off the press, God, Trump, and the 2020 election. And there's never, ever been an election when you, sh you need to be informed you need to know what's going on, and you need to vote. I don't care if the snow is up to here. No, it doesn't snow that time of year, does it? <laughs> uh, whatever it is going on, make sure you get, to, if you have to stand in line. I don't have to stand in line because I voted absentee for years. And absentee is wonderful because you can really study everything on it. So. That's right. But, you know, there's also corruption in our mm -hmm. voting um, We need to pray ballots. for that. And the absentee or now we have early voting, which mm -hmm. is you're voting absentee early. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are examples of where there has been voter fraud, where they suddenly, you know, we here in Florida, they we disappear. have paper ballots, <laughs> yes. and then they put it in the computer, which is nice, because they can go back and count something mm -hmm. if it's real close. And they, they find, uh, in um, Broward County, they found a whole box of uncounted, mm -hmm. right. this was after the polls closed. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And I guess there was really no way to prove. I think it was some time later, wasn't it? it wasn't I, you know, later. there's all these yeah. stories. And that's one of the reasons that I believe that Trump could actually lose if the other side is so dishonest that they basically steal it. But this is where I want the Christians to hear me. And you know, Stephen, like I said, I've known of presidents since Roosevelt. I've never, ever known of the people of God to pray like they are now. It's, it's all over the place. I know personally, I've never done it before. I've prayed for those in authority. But I mean, I, he, I pray for this man every single day, and I'm not the only one. No. They're out there. You can see it, you can see it on the Internet and, and things where we didn't have that kind of connection before. Well, Mike Bickle of the International House of Prayer is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he told me, and I quoted him in the book, we were, he was talking about American Christians, we were praying that God would raise somebody up and we didn't have anybody in mind <laughs> with the idea that he raised up, you know, this unlikely billionaire who'd never been in public mm -hmm. office, uh, 
was famous on TV for mm -hmm. saying, you're fired. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not exactly our stereotype of a president, which is why some people don't like him. Uh, even the people that, you know, that we're talking about with Christianity mm -hmm. today. And, um, but he, he is a disruptor. He's strong. Uh, some, you know, have you noticed he hasn't even aged in office? You know, haven't we seen, don't it's they like put that in the sleeps. press? He sleeps only a few hours a night. You're right. And uh, I can't, in fact, I, he, uh, he recently flew over to Davos, uh, Switzerland, to the economic summit. And I saw on the news, he was walking up to Air Force One, and I guess he was going to fly all night. And when I got up the next morning and listened to the news, he had already given a speech over there. I thought, man, if I flew to yeah. Europe, I'd want to sleep in the next day. But he has so much energy, and he's getting so much accomplished in, fi in spite of the fact that, that the opposition, in fact, they call themselves the opposition, fight him every single day. And mm -hmm. I want Christians to understand what's at stake spiritually mm -hmm. and understand that we, we have the ability to turn out our people, to get people to register to vote, take people to the polls. You know, there are some people that it's hard for them right. to drive. You Churches can, can do that? Uh, yes, individuals can do it. I've, I've actually done that a few mm -hmm. times. I take my own 91-year-old mother to mm -hmm. a poll um, to help her to vote because that's still important to her. Well, as a citizen, a single lady, I am tired of the tax bite they take out of what I do make. And what I appreciate about him other than he does promote Christianity. He does promote prayer. He promotes a lot oh, of things. Oh, he surrounds he himself with Christians and a lot of them, shall we say it, are Pentecostals yeah, or, they, or they kind they of of that segment. They're praying the Holy Spirit around him and I'm, I'm one of them. But also I appreciate the fact that he said, okay, we're not going to pay for everything anymore. America has sent missionaries around the world. This is one reason I believe God blesses it. Uh, we've fed the world. We've protected other nations. Our military has. We've paid for their protection, and we've offered religious freedom. Uh, we have so many things that God is pleased with, but we've got some things that must make him weep, too. And this is where the people, the children of God, need to stand up for what is right. Forget your label. Just forget the label. Look what's right, what's wrong, according to Scripture. And it's pretty easy. You're right. And, pretty easy. you know, every country in the world is wicked mm -hmm. let's face it you know even israel is a is a secular state Very and secular. we we believe that israel has a special place in god's plan of course mm -hmm. and christians around the world need to pray for their own mm -hmm. governments um, but we have a responsibility here in america and as goes america so goes the world mm -hmm. in lots and lots of ways and and if we become a socialist nation think of all the bad america will be so weak our economy will be weak we'll be in such chaos that bad guys are going to be able to pop up all over the world. We already have bad guys out mm. there, but there is some check and balance. Mm. America mm. has done that. We're kind of the policemen of the world, and you're right, it gets pretty expensive, and Trump is trying to change Absolutely. that. Absolutely. The name of the book is God, Trump, and the 2020 Election, and uh, tell us a little bit about the people you've talked to two for this book. You've in interviewed a lot of people. Well, I'm a journalist. I'm a mm -hmm. Christian journalist. Mm -hmm. I, when I was on Fox, I referred to myself and uh, and when they did a little write-up, they said they called, they said I was a self-described Christian journalist. Oh. I thought maybe well. <laughs> self-described <laughs> yeah. as if maybe that wasn't really Forget a fact. The facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so, you know, I interviewed people and like I said, you're even in the book a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't really interview you. It was, it was from these telecasts. In mm -hmm. fact, you said some good sound bites. Who knows mm -hmm. when that'll, where that'll mm -hmm. show up, but, and, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you gave me a nice endorsement, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. But I interviewed everyone from Jay Sekulow, who is on the president's mm -hmm. defense team. Most Christians would know his name because he's pretty well known. Uh, I interviewed Doug Weed, who w served in the uh, George H.W. Bush White House, and he gave me a whole... Uh, chapter on how Washington and what we now kind of call the deep state has always despised Bible-believing Christians, even though they try to get our votes. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, and I interviewed uh, all kinds of other people, Christian leaders, mm -hmm. people who know him, people like Paula White Cane, 
Uh, I interviewed uh, Ralph Reed extensively. He gave me a lot of stuff. Uh, Dr. Michael Brown. I mean, I could go right down the list. There's, the index is just full of names, including yours. And, uh, and as far as I can remember, no anonymous um, sources um, except one preacher. Someone had told me that he had said, everyone has sinned, but some people have gotten caught. And I thought that was a good quote. Uh -huh. I mean, it just added a little something. That includes so, me. <laughs> so I went, I went to the, directly to the preacher, see so if it was okay. And he said, yes, the quote was right, but he didn't want his name in a book on Trump. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not exactly an anonymous source. But mm -hmm. I mean, some of the books written on Trump were all about anonymous sources that probably made up mm -hmm. half of what they said. But this is well documented, lots of footnotes. I think that that is just journalistic integrity, but frankly, journalism has gotten away mm -hmm. from that. And it, it's sad what's happening, and hopefully Trump is getting things turned around, and that's why we need to get him reelected. Yeah, I want to touch on one more thing, and that is that uh, conventional wisdom kind of says, you know, Christians don't get involved in politics, which is really wrong. But Billy Graham, uh, really didn't. And I remember when he knelt in front of the White House as a young evangelist and, and they, they kind of So you heard me saying that on the other no, show. No, I knew it. I saw uh -huh. it. I, was, I told Darlene before, you, uh, the producer of the other show. Anyway, uh, from that point on, he was very shy about talking about politics as he should have been, but it's not, it wasn't like it is today. His son, Franklin, is out there unashamedly saying we need to vote for President Trump because of spiritual things. And that's what we really want to get across. Um, and also because they're targeting us. Uh, you know, the IRS audited the Billy Graham Association. You know, as far as you, you know, most Christians, we just think it's the gold standard. And they probably can't really prove uh, that because I, I guess they do random audits sometimes, mm -hmm. but I think they targeted them, and it was because they stood up. There was some bill there in North Carolina mm -hmm. where they're headquartered, uh, having to do with gay rights, uh, something yeah. to do with bathrooms maybe, and because yeah. and the, isn't it funny? Right after that, they were audited. I can tell you this: I was on the executive committee for Billy Graham when he came to Tampa Bay, and I was in those meetings for a full year. There were only about um, seven of us. That's the cleanest organization I have ever seen in my life. So you know that was a setup. But I would like to remind the people that no matter what, the scripture said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, that's the one you kind of miss. It's still talking about God's people. God's people turn from their wicked ways. Then he would hear from heaven, he would forgive their sin, he would heal their land. We need healing, my friends, and I hope that this book and this author has brought something to your attention that you will seriously consider, and we're, we're not talking about just an election, we're talking about the future of a great nation. You're right. And I want to thank you for coming. It's always a delight to have you come. I Are know. you writing a book right now, another one? I, I'm thinking about it. You're not going to make an announcement. No, oh, but okay. off camera, I'll tell you. I want to know what you think about it. And I like coming here because I get good stuff from, you know, I've used you in my newsletters, oh, on the podcast. Anytime, so. anytime. You're so welcome. Stay with us. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Martha Lean would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, once again, the name of the book by my guest is God, Trump, and the 2020 Election. I do hope that what he had to say will just kind of whet your appetite to realize how important this is. It's not anything for Christians to stay away from. It's for Christians to be the first ones in the voting booth. Hope you'll remember that. The Bible throughout Old Testament, New Testament tells us how we're supposed to approach the nations we live in. And even in the New Testament, uh, that we pray for all of those in authority. 
But also, I, I jotted down a couple here. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And you know, for many, many decades, God was the Lord over the United States of America. And as sin has creeped into our uh, higher learning echelon and, and every other in the um, school system, it's made a big difference. But blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Here's one, Isaiah 60, 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee, those nations shall be utterly wasted. We've got a lot of history of that, of other nations. We, it's everywhere. You can read your history books. It's the ones that stay true to the word of God that will flourish and prosper. And of course, Proverbs 14 says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And just because our nation is just taking a turn towards commercialism and toward uh, outright sin, when we can kill babies, full-term babies out of their mother's womb, when you can have a baby so an abortionist can harvest their organs, when you have endorsed by the Supreme Court, one man, by the way, same-sex marriage, spitting in the face of God who created marriage back in the book of Genesis, you can expect that part that says that sin is a reproach to any people. And I don't know how well most of you know your Bible, but there's one book in there that it's pretty hard to take sometimes. It's called Lamentations. It's in the Old Testament, and it follows Jeremiah. It's a short book, but it absolutely exemplifies its title, Lamentations. There's lamenting. And the first verse in it, and this is telling how Israel has fallen, Israel has sinned. And the scripture says, how lonely sits the city. She has become like a widow who was once great among the nations. Christians, I cannot tell you how important it is that we get involved on every single level of our government because we could turn it around. The evangelical vote, Christian vote, is a huge block. Probably the side that has that block and great numbers of that block will win the election. So take it very, very seriously, will you? And also, will you join me next time? Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.